Hello and welcome to the Scholar Progenium. Today we've got another exciting bolt action battle report as you go behind the scenes with us as we do our final practice game before the Warlord Grand Tournament 2024. So yes, a couple of weekends ago, JP and myself headed down to Nottingham to participate in Warlord Games Bolt Action Grand Tournament. The grand farewell, you might say, to Bolt Action 2nd Edition. Now, it was a fantastic weekend, and as I was preparing the After Action Report uh, this week to put up for you guys, I felt like I would be leaving out valuable footage if I didn't put up this battle report first. Now, I'm not sure how much of an appetite you guys even have for second edition battle reports with third edition just around the corner. But in filming the after action report for the Warlord GT, this battle report just seemed very relevant so you guys could understand how I was using my list. Um, in every game because it was a good representation of how the units flow together and how this skirmish finish army operates and this army is the culmination of almost a year's worth of development on and off uh, well several months at least since january i've been releasing my road to the gt series where i've uh, tweaked the finish list tried different things out and developed it until we got to this final point and this final list came from flying over to Denmark to train against the Danish national team um, and all my experiences there sort of and all my experiences over the course of a couple of years of running fins went into putting together this competitive list so at 1100 points single platoon with no dice limit this in my experience was the best competitive list i could put together so if you want to find out how the tournament went if you want to see this list in action stay tuned now i'll take you through the list in a bit more detail We're heading up the army we have a second lieutenant regular on his own now you can't take inexperienced officers for the fins so that's the cheapest option i have then following up we've got four squads of eight sissy fighters these are all veteran fighters they all come with the master of the hunt special ability which allows them to after advancing to select to go into the ambush order so they can advance into ambush which is very very powerful now they're all armed purely with rifles no lmgs here but they've all also been upgraded with tough fighter special rule for one point a model taking them to 15 points a man but i think that's well worth it these guys are really good at skirmishing moving around the lines shooting other units uh, on my opponent's side that are trying to reposition towards objectives or react to my positioning just makes them a really volatile skirmish force that if they do get too close um, they can switch into close combat mode or they can defend themselves against um, an attack from another veteran close combat unit, um, especially if they can get a little cheeky ambush off as the unit charges in. So we've got four squads of those, and then our fifth squad of infantry is a continuation war squad. It's six men, and it's all armed with rifles, but with two Panzerfausts in there, just to give me a little close-up punch, just a little threat um, they can take an objective, they can still fire with their rifles, uh, they don't have the Master of the Hunt ability, but that doesn't stop them uh, benefiting from the other Finnish special rules, which are, of course, if they lose half the unit, they go up a veterancy, so they go from regular to veteran, taking my whole army potentially able to go to veteran there. And then, on top of that, they um, also do still fire plus one to hit from ambush, so they've got a base of a hit of two up, from ambush without other modifiers uh, as just every rifle in the army moving on to the support teams we have a regular 
medium mortar with no spotter. It's the cheapest mortar I can take. Um, I've got used to not using a spotter and just saving those 10 points. Um, it works a lot of the time it has worked, but I, you know sometimes you just wish you'd spent the extra 10 points for the, for the spotter. Um, but that just is what it is. Um, moving on to other support units, we have a Panzer Shrek team. These guys are regular and they're generally mounted in a regular utility car so they can dash around reliably and take out my opponent's armor. And a lot of the time, um, I knew I'd be facing off against Stuarts. In fact, over the course of the GT, I only faced Soviets and Brits. Those were the only two factions that I faced. So um, there was a lot of Stuarts out there and the Panzer Shrek team in a car, they can deal with those guys reliably with a bit of clever play, dashing out from behind cover, um, repositioning rapidly. Very, very useful uh, anti-tank unit. And then I've also got a flamethrower team. They're in an inexperienced utility car, just saving those points. Um, sometimes, you know, that he doesn't get to move, but you should have kept him out of pins um, and out of the range of pins and so on and so forth. So he generally... Um, just hides away and then if the enemy gets too close just dashes out and gets that flamethrower involved then we've got a veteran sniper unit these guys are absolutely essential for the list especially especially because of the high concentration of large veteran squads so i've got four very expensive eight-man veteran squads in this list and they're then very vulnerable especially because they skirmish up close and they've only got rifles to flamethrowers, so you've got flamethrower teams, or you've got, say, Canadian engineers uh, in a, a Bren carrier with a flamethrower, that kind of thing. Well, the veteran sniper, he's got master of the hunt like the sissy fighter, so he can advance into ambush, and he can just be that extra, very reliable anti-flamethrower unit, and it makes it really difficult for people to dash up in transport and hop out of a flamethrower when you hit on a two up because he's got a rifle, he's finished. If you're shooting from ambush, he hits on a two up and uh, not suffering any other modifiers, an absolutely clutch unit to defend my veteran forces. And then rounding out the list, we have a, um, a bow force. Uh, this is a heavy auto cannon pulled by a, I think it's an inexperienced horse drawn limber, either inexperienced or regular. Um, and the boat fours again really reliable. You can pop off two shots. So against a Stuart, you know, if you have to hit on a five up, um, you, you know, you've got still a good chance of getting that hit. Um, if you're trying to shoot units in transports, engineers in trucks, there's just a whole host of units that are vulnerable to the pen plus three of a heavy auto cannon. That's all you need, and getting two shots off just makes him that much more reliable than say having a couple of light auto can a uh, light anti-tank guns on you know an armored car or so on and so forth especially as the Finns uh, cannot take um, most of their vehicles without taking them as an unreliable vehicle so one pin generates an extra pin it's just not worth it in my eyes and the bow force kind of does that job of that far-reaching uh, slightly more reliable um, anti-armor capability and then the big gun in the force the only big gun we really have is the bt-42 that's a medium howitzer um, mounted on a medium uh, tank chassis no machine guns no messing around but again just a really valuable unit again against things such as gurkha armies and so on and so forth you can have your bt-42 just behind some obscuring terrain, nice and far back in your lines, but as they get forward, as they get towards those objectives, get towards your units, you can just roll that BT-42 out, slap a three inch uh, medium how it's a template on them, and uh, yeah, just do some work, and he often hits quite reliably, it makes it really nasty to get up close to and personal with my army. So it's a skirmishing army, it's a mobile army, it's all about being flexible on the battlefield, moving around, avoiding uh, nasty charges, and being able to uh, put myself in a position where I can then uh, potentially counter charge depending on how much of a beating I've given my opponent's, un uh, my opponent's forces. So with that, uh, that's a very in-depth deep dive of the competitive finish list.
Next up, we have JP's Soviet list. Now, before I go into the deep dive of the list itself, I thought it might be a good idea because it's a pre-tournament report, battle report, to give you an idea of uh, JP's journey as a competitive player and as a Soviet player. So, a lot of you won't know this, but JP is actually a fantastic uh, war gamer. He's a very high skill level. Whenever we start playing a new game, after a few matches, JP will quickly become the one to beat in our gaming group. Now, he's a humble guy. He wouldn't even like me saying this, but the reason I'm telling you this is because not to sort of boast on his behalf, but to give you a little bit of the, a context, because JP's been on this journey with me in the series, The Road to the GT, and he's developed his list. Long-time viewers will remember when it was just a box of 40 infantry, a T-34-85, a Ziz-3 from Facebook Marketplace, just a quick thrown together army. And over the course of a year or so, he's developed and fine-tuned it as we've been on this adventure together and developed an absolute beast of a list. Again, this list was really forged into its final form when we went over to Denmark and JP faced Benny, one of the Danish players who has a 20 die Soviet list which I fought against and drew against with my fins and I, you can see that in one of the previous videos um, in this series. But uh, Benny uses a lot of inexperienced infantry. JP um, uses a lot of veteran infantry, finds the reliability of veteran infantry just that much more effective. He also uses fewer engineers in trucks because once you're out of the trucks, if those trucks get knocked out of those transports, you, you know, it's hard to hop back into them and get moving again. You're either delayed because you can't move your transport when you get into it and you miss a turn and then you've got to drive off and hop out again or you move in six inches a turn. So he has a few veteran engineers, but he's got a lot of just mobile veteran infantry that can dash around, hold objectives get out some mid-range fire, put out some pins. They've just got flexibility so he's, and they're reliable and resilient as well. They follow orders when you need them to, even if they've taken a couple of pins. Uh, they don't necessarily need officer support and they don't die that easily as well. So uh, I'll tell you through the list in a bit more detail now. So leading the list, he's got an inexperienced second lieutenant without a friend, just cheap as chips. He's then got um, four, five squads of infantry in total. So starting off on the bottom right, he's got the 12-man free inexperienced squad um, with anti-tank grenades. You know them, you love them. Um, just useful for dashing up the board and you know the opponent has to deal with them or they can grab an objective, do anything you need really. Um, then he's got um, two squads of seven-man Siberian veterans, um, so they're tough fighter and they all have rifles. So kind of like my sissy, although they don't have master of the hunt, um, he can put out pins at a bit longer range than if he had SMGs and um, he's still tough fighter when he gets into close combat. He's then got uh, a, another six man squad uh, of veterans with SMGs and they're in a T20 which is a seven uh, open topped, I think, uh, and can uh, armor seven uh, transport that can take six men. He's got a fifth squad of infantry. This time it's a six man engineer squad. Four of them have SMGs. Uh, one of them has a flamethrower. They're, of course, veterans. They only die from small arms and in close combat uh, on a six up, which is really, really good. And they also go in a T-20 transport. So very solid uh, block of infantry that's hard to shift uh, and relatively mobile, can do flanking maneuvers, got a lot of options with his infantry. So he can take on any mission type. Moving forward onto the support teams, he has three dog teams, uh, all inexperienced, I believe. Just two man teams with two dogs in each. Now these are really effective, not only uh, for hunting down tanks, but also 
If your opponent wants to get units into your deployment zone or take objectives on your side of the board, these guys can stay nice and safe behind line of sight, blocking terrain. And then they, if they dash up with a truck full of infantry, these guys can hop out and blow that truck up or something like that. So that they're really good defensively as well. And having three makes it really hard to get into his deployment zone when he's defending. Next up, we have the Ziz 3. Um, just really reliable. One of the best artillery pieces in the game, point for point. He's then got an inexperienced medium mortar. Just cheap and effective. Um, everyone knows what that does. Next up, we have a veteran sniper team. Now, you can discuss what veterancy or whether to even take a sniper in a competitive list until the cows come home. But you can see there again, JP going for um, units that if he wants them to be reliable and be taking part in the combat, not hidden away, then he's going for that veterancy to make sure that they can do their job and uh, be involved in the fighting without the risk of just being easily wiped out. So if he has to get involved in a sniper duel, if they've taken a regular sniper, he should close that deal and then be able to get on with harassing mortars and uh, flamethrowers, bazooka teams, that kind of thing. Next up, we have um, a couple of jeeps. We've got a transport jeep for his flamethrower, just a classic uh, competitive combo there. Um, regular jeep with a regular flamethrower team in it that can just dash up, pop out and light up some veterans or a, a tank that's getting too close, something like that. He's also got, as his armoured car slot, just another Jeep with a medium machine gun on it, open topped, uh, soft skins, nothing fancy, nice and cheap. Then again, he's got, uh, to round out the list, just a light tank, a classic. He's got the Recky Stewart, so Soviet version of the Stewart. It's got all the Dakar on it, so I believe 23 shots in total, um, light anti-tank gun, and I believe this version can recce if it needs to. And so you can see he's got inexperienced units where he knows he's going to be hiding away and sort of making dashes. He's got cheap units filling out. So he's getting that 18 dice mass Soviet horde there. But where it counts in the center with his uh, core infantry and his sniper He's paid the points for veterancy so they can really do their job reliably. So it's about sort of no one to hold them, no one to fold them. You don't have to go sort of all experienced, all veteran. You can do a, a nice mix here. And, you know, as I've said, JP's a top level competitive player. Back when we used to go to 40k tournaments in 7th edition, JP was on top table in like national events all the time. When he was playing Age of Sigma until recently, you know, he'd be on top tables at GTs uh, with his Age of Sigma army. So he really, really knows what he's doing. And so the sort of journey that we've been on, going to Denmark, all of that, uh, all the battles that he's played on this channel for the past year and a half with his Soviets, just continuously developing the list. And so this is where he's arrived at for the GT. So with all that waffle out of the way, let's cut to JP's gaming room. And we'll have a look at this practice game. You join us at the field of battle after deployment. Now, of course, this is a tournament game, so the terrain may look quite different to regular viewers. Uh, we've not really gone for aesthetics. We've gone for basically uh, just about as much terrain as you would get on a on, a, on, a, on your average tournament board. Randomised the game out of the two custom games from the mission pack. You see. And the six missions we'll be playing over the course of the Grand Tournament weekend in order to, as Warlord say, to have the final champion of second <laughs> edition, which is kind of cool. I know we've not played classic Bolt Action for about a month now. We've been messing around with Bolt Action 2.5. And if you haven't seen that, go check that stuff out because we've been uh, trying out the new Bolt Action rules as they've been released. And it is crazy, but in a fun way. I can't remember these rules. Yeah, well, this is going to be interesting now. We've got, we've got, we've got used to hitting on threes and fours. <laughs> now we're going to be uh, hitting on sixes followed by sixes again. We've uh, got used to having three or four howitzers, five tanks. machine guns, a couple of tanks. So uh, we're going back to basics now. Should be fun. Should be an interesting challenge. Thought we'd better get at least one practice game in before the GT. 
and uh, you know also as you will have seen in the list in classic uh, pre-tournament style we have and I think this is the first time I've ever done this on the channel correct me if I'm wrong yeah. we have got a couple of unpainted models it seems almost fitting we've gone in reverse that uh, <laughs> possibly our final ever game of second edition on the channel unless we do a maybe a a goodbye celebration game with all the boys. One of our final games, we've got actually got unpainted models on here, so I must apologise in advance, uh, genuinely for that. That's not the way we like to do things on here. It's just the for a tournament that we haven't used. Before. It's tradition, man. You've got to have a couple of unpainted models that you're hastily painting the night before. The night before. The that's the way it's got to be, so that's the way we're doing things. Now, with all that waffle out of the way, what is the mission that we're playing? Well, it's called Nuts, and it's very straightforward. There's two ways to gain points. The deployment zone for each player is six inches on. And you get a point for each unit that you kill. And you also get a point for each of your units that ends in the enemy's deployment zone. So within six inches of the opposite table. So there's quite some distance to travel there. Uh, but you don't have to. In fact, you cannot run off the board. You have to stay on the board. Now, there's a couple of specific units that can and can't score, and we'll be referring to that as we go, because um, this is a new, ma uh, new mission for us. We've never played yeah. it before. So I thought we'd better practice one of the new ones. Now, what is our deployment? Well, I've gone for... We start with three units, six inches on, and everything else first can be wave. first way up or to... Reserve. Or reserve. Up to half has to be first wave. We've got everything first wave. Just getting involved. Now, on the finish side, I've got a mortar set up behind this wall here, six inches on. And I've also got my horse drawn limber uh, and my bow force is inside that, so to speak, being drawn. Just coming onto the board there. On the other side, the Soviets, their three units, they've gone for a sniper. They've gone for their Ziz 3, covering a nice portion of the board. And then they also have... The mortar. Now, is yours a medium mortar? Medium mortar, inexperienced. Inexperienced. So, hidden away there, he's cutting some fine angles, probably just got my uh, artillery in sight there, Position. I presume. Positioned. Uh, artillery positions in sight. Now, in terms of terrain here, uh, we're a lot sparser and more basic than we might normally play. We've got a couple of rough, te rough ground, so difficult ground, soft cover hills in each corner. We've got a variety of craters. These are all soft cover, rough ground. Um, that's it. That's it. Um, we then have a little sheet pen on this a small holding somewhere on the borders of Finland and Russia. Uh, so that's hard cover walls. We've got a couple of dense forests dotted around. And then these little fields here, we're all just going to count them as wherever you're on it, regardless of the, the crashed glider or the tank, it's just area terrain soft cover yeah. just simple easy and then the little w uh, well that he's got here it's becoming overgrown uh, that is going to be hard cover and the walls the little broken down bits of walls they're going to be hard cover and this is simply going to be a ruin so obscuring difficult terrain and also hard cover so with all of that explained we know how we're scoring we're set up we've got dice in the bag We'll join when the action this begins. dice is Russian. JP puts his Ziz on ambush. Next dice is Finnish. I'm going to shoot my mortar at his mortar. Needing a lucky six here. No. Oh. Next dice is Russian again. This time he's going to fire his mortar over at mine. Make sure I've done it first, but he's a bit rusty. Oh, oh it's close. Join us just over that midway point of turn one. Of course, it's mainly just going down with a couple of things, advancing and running with others. Of course, we started six inches on and first wave. I've got one squad of sissy veterans uh, just ran on up behind this wall. Squ a squad of regular continuation war fighters just uh, advanced on into this crater, not getting too close. Uh, horse and limber went down as we saw the mortar fired. And then I've just basically run on three other sissy squads in the centre left. Uh, section of the board and then I've got a flamethrower that's advanced on flamethrower inside has gone down and there's an officer supporting all of that now it's my turn I've just activated my BT4 so uh, I brought him on behind sort of that angle of the house so the Ziz can't get me with his ambush and now I'm going to lob a shot over onto JP's mortar 
And of course, we're needing a lucky six for this. Come on, lad. Ooh, Not quite. Next up, we've got the Russians. If we just take a quick look at their sort of deployment advancing on so far, we've got a seven man veteran Siberian squad, a officer, no, dog team, dog team. and a mortar behind this woodland here. We've got the free squad in the middle behind a wall. Ziz and Sniper on a crater in the middle. Two dog teams and the MG Gas Deep. On the uh, left flank there. Now he's, uh, I've just dashed on with my sniper into a position. JP's gonna take a shot with his veteran sniper who's in ambush. I'm risking it here. Let's yeah. see if he gets lucky with the first shot. No. no, he does not. We're on to the tail end of the turn. Last few dice each in the bag. Now JP's brought, uh, advancing on his Stuart. He's going to be firing 18 shots into this sissy squad here. Now it's over half range, moved and soft cover. Sixes to hit. That's looking like a solid burst there. Four, five. Five. Nice, well over average. And fives again. Oh, three. Oh, that's insane. Well, that's a heavy hit. Three of them, not enough to knock them out, but. Uh, see if I can get you opposite. Oh, yeah, of course. I do. Okay, so the officer's dead. Um, and they don't quite go to veteran, nor do they go of a veterancy from that. But uh, they will have a couple of dice of the turn for the Finns, and it's spicy. I decide to advance my car up here, advance the bazooka team out, and they're going to try and take a shot at this Stuart before he gets into any area terrain or anything like that. So it'll be a five to hit. Uh, now, JP has the Ziz on ambush. I'm within half range here. So it's just going to be small team, soft cover on the HE shell. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a five or a five. Let's go. No. no. <laughs> right, okay. Now it's my turn. Right. Come on, Bazooka. Needing a five on the Stuart here. No, oh, it's a one in return. <laughs> okay, okay. There's been a lot of that. Uh, do you have anything else to bring on? One more dice? I have one last card, I was just going to drive up the board. Okay, so we, you can pop him on now, and uh, I'll go straight into the end of turn summary. So as we saw, sort of midpoint, we're just running on infantry units, getting them ready to fight next turn. Um, I've got all the majority of my veterans on this side, but I do have a tank, sniper, a regular squad, and another squad of veterans covering my Centre right. Now JP's advancing up with it. Is that a flamethrower car? Flamethrower car with officer in it. Flamethrower car with the officer in it. He's also got a car with six body armor people in. Yeah, with a flamethrower. And a flamethrower, engineers. Then he's got two dog squads in his MG car, just still snuck behind there. And he's kind of spread over the board. He's got his uh his anchor in the middle, his Stuart, and his inexperienced squad, a couple of support teams. And he's pushing up in a pincer manoeuvre on the left flank as well with a, a squad of veterans in a transport, a cosmonaut, T20. And then he's got a squad of veterans who sprinted on and a squad of veterans who uh, dashed on behind an obscuring bit of terrain. So we're kind of uh, countering each other fairly well. I'm in a more defensive position. He's in a more attack position. But I guess that's as it should be between the Finns and the Russians. So... We've been here before, we've fought many times against each other. I'm getting real Denmark vibes here against Benny. Shout out to Benny, even though I know he won't watch this. <laughs> but uh, if I could beat him, well, draw against him with 20 dice, then hopefully I'll, um, fingers crossed, be you. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, join us, turn two. Gentle Early. dice of turn two is the Soviets. He's activating the Stuart. He's shooting his whole mounted machine gun and his double LMG at the Panzer Shrek team, they're going down, and his light anti-tank gun at my BT-42. We can't do anything about it. So, okay. Big gun. No, misses. No. And then it'll be 14 shots on the base. 13 shots. 13 dice, sixes followed by sixes on the Shrek. And two. Two chances. Can he make it? No, no second dice was finished. I put my sissy squad over here on ambush in the face of the advancing flamethrower team. Now, J I was tempted to do my mortar. Now, JP's firing his mortar at mine. We're having a little duel here. He needs a five. 
Oh, no, we just oh, missed next it. Next up, it's another Soviet dice. We have the sniper this time shooting across at my Panzer Shrek team, needing a uh, three. three. Oh, that's another one. This dice is finished. BT42 advances past the sniper and gets into half range of the T20 there. He's going to sling an HE shot from his medium howitzer across at that transport full of engineers. What's a hit here? Come on, lad. Oh, it's oh, another it's one! Advances forward. He's actually going to spray some shots. He's got an angle on the mortar team here before it can fire. And he's hit on sixes. Gets a hit. Gets a hit. Gets a win. He's previously nice. put the Ziz on ambush. They're going to shoot their shot now. And it's actually at this sissy squad. Uh, just as they start moving, they were in soft cover. So it will be a five to hit five because to hit. they're over half range at that point. No. Nope. Oh, a couple of dice back and forth. Now the Finns are going to try and shoot their bow fours into the front of this pesky Stewart. Here as he is getting a little bit of soft cover there. We've got one hit. That's good. Pen plus three armor, eight on the front. So five to glance, six to pen, is it? Oh, it's a pen. Nice. Okay, that's all we need to see here. Some action. Turn two. Yeah, have a... Uh, no heavy auto cannon. And so our uh, result, four. And the Stuart is knocked out by the Bofors. That's what he's there for. That is what the crew are paid to do. Nice work, gentlemen. And the battle commenceth. Dice is finished. We're gonna see if we can keep this going, keep the momentum rolling and shoot across at the opposing veteran Soviet sniper team. It's not gonna be an easy shot. We've got the hit though. Come on, lads. Five up for, for Finland. No, but it is a pin on the Soviet sniper. It's on, boys and girls. The veteran engineers with body armour have hopped out of their T20. Now they're just about an inch, they're about seven inches away, so no flamethrower this round. And the Finns are in ambush, but they do have a pin on them, so they're, they'll only be hitting on threes here. Now, JP's advanced beyond the cover, but he brings the cover with him with that body armour. Yeah. So uh, let's Finn's see what happens. Ambush first on threes. Um, it's okay, it's okay. And then needing five, uh, sixes here. Need to get lucky. No. It's one. Okay, so unfortunately that was a knocked dice. Uh, no wounds on the engineers, but it is fortunately a pin. They're shooting back at me now. They don't care about moving because of their SMGs, but they are over half range and a pin, making it fives. Oh, and hard cover. Six is followed by sixes. I'm thinking 2.5. I don't get the cover set. Okay, six is followed by sixes here. He's got a yeah. chance. Oh, no, man. not quite. JP's going for a one two punch with his Soviet. So he's had two dice in a row. He's advanced his car just around the side of this forest. He'd moved it up there, like behind there last turn. Now he's hopping out his flamethrower team. It's just a two man squad. It's not like it's another squad of veterans, but it is a flamethrower. He's uh, within half range, so it's just going to be point blank, uh, point blank, so it's going to be a threes to hit for moving. Oh, come on. Please get a one or two. Oh, I guess the hit on the sissy, that's not what we wanted to see. Five hits on them. Okay. Okay, so we've got an interesting interaction in the rules here. Uh, JP's done four casualties there, wounding on twos. That's it, I killed four of them. That puts me up to super bet, leadership 11 now. So I need an eight here on the three pins for my runaway check. We've got two of these to pass. No, we fail it on an 11 and he's got them with the flamethrower team. Finally, of course, the fuel check for the flamethrower team. That's a six. Yeah. Okay, plenty is brimming. As the Soviet veterans advance out of the woodland towards the sheep pen, the waiting fins unleash a hail of ambush fire um, into them. That's going to be over half range and hard cover. So we're going to need fives here because of our ambush ability. There's at least one pin. It's not great though. It Puts them on sixes followed by six and I do get a kill at least. Can I kill something special? No. Six shots back, but disrupted by the ambush fire. It's going to be sixes followed by sixes. Missed with everything. Next up, we've got the finish mortar. Now very tempted to rotate and fire danger close. But uh, we are zeroed in a little bit. See if I can get a quick five over here 
before we switch targets. Come on, lad. No, it's a one. Last couple of dice of the turn, gentlemen. So last two dice, I've got a Jeep with a flamethrower in. I'm just uh, about to rotate him on the spot. As soon as I touch him, JB's firing his ambush from the as You can just see me. It'll be soft cover over half range. Half range. Oh, five. Five to hit from ambush with well, the Zizz. Need to hit this game. <laughs> no, misses, thankfully. And I'll just complete my ambush. Guys, nice. of turn three. And it is the BT-42 for the Finns. We're going to sling a shot straight into these engineers. Now, JP's decided to go down. Excellent. That's what we need. They can only move six inches a turn. Just slow them down. I mean, of course, if he just sits in this corner, it's a point. But they're not reaping devastation across my line. So, all good nice. there. Soft cover down. So, we're looking for a lucky six on these engineers here. Oh no. Right, so turn three is Soviet. Now, JP's advanced his dog squad up to try and take care of this pesky BT-42. Oh, I wanted to get him, rid of him with all my infantry over here. I have taken a couple of pot shots, but uh, now he's so, got the chance. Yeah, he's dodged. So a one, it might get my Jeep. Two, three, you're gunning down. Four, up it's a Pembos five hit. Oh, okay, so one gets one, gunned down, one hits. Pen plus five on the front of the BT. Yeah. For that is a pen because he's only armor eight. Okay. Oh, oh and he's knocked off. out. Nice. So that's it. Uh, both tanks or well, armored vehicles dealt with there. Just transports. Yes, yeah, Jeep's gonna pop some more shots with his medium machine gun into my mortar team. That's gonna be six to hit. Soft cover, small team over half range. Okay, One more team hit this time. And it is a kill. Now that will force me to take a leader check on one pin. And Soviet right. sniper passes his order check. He's going to continue the sniper duel now, shooting over at the fin. It's a hit. No kill though. Had a couple of dice back and forth. Fins have just lined the wall here and gone on ambush. Moved another uh, sissy squad over here. Got those guys in ambush too, looking at this flamethrower team if they want to try and move anywhere. Um, JP's taking a shot at me as we saw, sniper on sniper. Now it is the Ziz turn. And he's going to lob a shot indirect over onto the sissy squad that are lying in wait on ambush on this flank of the board, looking at his infantry. Mm -hmm. So, needing that lucky six. No. no. Continuation war fighter squad here. They're just going to take a straight fire order and shoot at the Jeep with the officer in. It can't wreck here or anything like that. Uh, oh, it's a healthy burst. Five hits. And then just looking for a simple six here. Nope. Nothing but a pen. Next dice is Soviet. He's hopping the officer out of the vehicle. Now I've got this sissy squad sat on ambush here. Six men. So we're going to pop the rifles hitting on fives. We've got two. And then, oh, three. And then needing threes. Oh, he's, he's, he's well dead. Well, I guess One to the head, two to the chest. <laughs> <laughs> no cover save, yeah, that's true indeed. Uh, it's, it's good for me that because although the flame tower can now move freely, um, it's a uh, dice for me and uh, um, not a point for him later on if you yeah. can sneak in behind this wall and hide for the rest of the The Soviets are advancing with their inexperienced free squad around the side of this building here. They're going to shoot into my sissy squad. There's uh, a fair few of them, eight of them are in half range. They're going to be hitting on sixes, back four on sixes, followed by sixes. Uh, sixes first. No, no, sixes by sixes. Or no, two, two chances. chances. Not much more to turn to find out. We've got a lot of Soviets danger close over here, but uh, he's hitting me on a three next turn with his mortar, <laughs> so I've uh, got to shoot at him. Defend ourselves on a four. Yes, oh, excellent. So that's going to be all three. I've got some experience, so this is twos to kill here. Oh, oh survives. one survives. D three, two pins. Seven, seven eight, seven. nine, he's gone. Uh, Russian reroll. Russian reroll. He's six. He passes. He passes. Yes. <laughs> Tail end of the turn. We've got a few dice left each. Both fours. It's going for a shot onto this squad here. They're going down, so it's going to be sixes. Oh, we better measure the range there because we never did. We need to roll sixes followed by sixes. Hardcover down, of course. 
Bolt action 2.5 yeah. confusing <laughs> me there. Oh, oh he gets, gets him. Yeah. Okay, so we've got that six to hit. Uh, now he's down. Uh, it's a single H, a single pen shot, if that makes sense. So it's just killing on a two at uh, one. Yeah, rounded down is one half is one. Uh, he gets a one, so it's just, and uh, now we need to roll the pins. And we do get two pins though, thankfully. Do you get the pins on there? And tank shots? Uh, oh no, it'll just be one pin, won't it? Yeah, yeah. One Join time. us at the end of turn three. Now, last couple of dice, I decided to move my car up. After all, JP's ambushing zizzers and so on and so forth had gone off. And I hopped the flamethrower out because I didn't want him to hop out into this forest and shoot up the car at point blank range. Have we got SMGs in that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, now, in return, JP decides to go down and buy this time. I do have a squad on ambush over here, but they do have two pins. In other news, I've got another squad on ambush here. The dice has just been knocked. And I have a sniper in ambush over here. So we need to do a little bit of resolving of ambushes. I think I'm going to pop all of them. Okay. Or attempt to pop all of them. First things first, this sissy squad over here, it goes off. Then we have this squad here. And theirs does not go off, their dice goes back in the bag. And then finally, the very important sniper here. This is the one I want. No, it's a one. Curses. So his flamethrower team gets away with it. So pop their ambush into the T20 here, just putting a pin on the transport and the veterans inside. Now, if we take a look at the board as it stands. JP's got a six, seven. Six man squ Sabirin's vet, so vet squad is. over here. Seven man here. Still three, six man here. And these are all veterans. All veterans. But um, they are somewhat sort of been bogged down just by incoming Finnish fire yeah. and the bow force and so on and so forth. Still so strong. And then uh, over here, we've just been doing a couple of back and forths. Of course, I withdrew my sniper out of dual range because I want to defend against the flamethrower, as we saw. Uh, JP just hopped his officer out for safety, but unfortunately got shot down mercilessly by a Finnish ambush. And then he moved the Jeep over here, nice and safe behind this wall. And I can shoot him with my bow force past my own infantry. I've managed to reposition somewhat, form a line over here. So I've got two pockets of sissy now with my support units in the middle. We, of course, have zeroed in on his mortar and he's on three pins in total. Two pins. Oh, two pins in total, close. sorry, yeah. And I've killed, yeah, and I've zeroed in though. JP has his uh, big 12 man and experience squad. Danger close, uh, potentially, or not just over charge range. Just, just, over charge, charge range. just over charge range of my lines. So we're really in the thick of it now. Soviets are in the teeth of the finish. But they've got a lot of flamethrowers. They've got two flamethrowers on this flank. Um, so the pressure is really on. But the Finns are wily and they're good at squirming out of the uh, the communist. Good skirmish army. Yeah, the good yeah. skirmish army. So let's see if we can keep it up. But I need to be skirmishing this way. I need to be skirmishing towards you. If I just defend, I'm not going to get any stuff in your lines. Ziz is going for a lob shot over on this sissy squad with the first Soviet dice at turn four. I'm just going to stay up. If he gets me, he's going to hit me with probably. Have we hit four of them? Yeah, let's go. No. no. Next dice is Soviet. He's going for some machine gun shots into this sissy squad here. He's just staying still, so it's going to be over our French soft cover fives. Two yes, hits, two nice. Hits. And then fives again. No, no kills, but okay. sniper teams popping a shot over at my Panzerfaust team behind this wall here. Hit. Yes, the hit. No kill though. Spicy manoeuvre here. The Soviets have taken a couple of casualties from my uh, continuation war squad advancing into this bit of soft cover here and shooting over at them. They didn't go to regular, they're just inexperienced. They've charged back, but nearest to nearest, they have to go through some difficult ground or they can charge around it. Uh, but in that case, we fight at the same time. So I've got four attacks hit, uh, killing on threes and you've got 10 attacks killing on fours no to fighter we are fighting this melee at the same time i'm going to be on the right here jp's going to be top left so you film first and then you we'll just go three two one fight i've got three kill, four kills Botched you. <laughs> okay well i've still killed four that's fine fins are advancing into the sheep pen now 
Now, the, the Soviets are going to fire an ambush that they kept from last turn. It's going to be sixes to hit. I'll go back half range. And I think Mortar going to try and finish the job with a two up now that he's zeroed in on the enemy Mortar. Yes, we get the hit. And then a two to kill. Yeah, it fails an advance order on a 10, and they're going to reverse six inches. Now, I previously have uh, passed an order check, moved out of the Zizzes, out of my original footprint. So the Ziz can't get me on a four next turn. I've gone on ambush and also shot my Panzer Shrek at him. So uh, I'm not surprised he's getting out of He's rotating. He's going to pound into this Jeep here. I'm needing sixes to hit. No. It's four and a one. You're looking. <laughs> at the end of turn four. I've still got a couple of ambushes to pop here, uh, as has JP. So we'll have to roll off for that in a second. I'll do the end of turn summary now. Uh, as we can see, the Finns are now getting the push up on this flank with the Soviets having been pinned and stalled by a combination of fire. However, on this flank, the Soviets are well embedded in the finish lines. Uh, they've got a flamethrower team here and a Jeep. They've also got six inexperienced men here and they hopped their veterans into the transport. They've also got a cheeky dog team just advancing through the woodlands on the edge over there. And they've still got uh, Sniper and Ziz uh, reliably firing away in the middle. Fins, as we can see, we've pushed up and we've, uh, we're just switching now to defend and try and push the Soviets out of our lines. Now, uh, let's do some pops first. Uh, JP goes first. Uh, on the four up, is it? Yeah. Nope. nope. So his just go to fire order. Now I'll see if I can fire these guys here. No. And I'll see if I can do my sniper. Come on, lads. No. Yes. That's twice that's happened. That's a, not getting very lucky with these end of turn pops. Uh, this squad over here. I'm going to try and pop as well. They do go off. So these guys are the reliable ambushers. Let's see uh, who we're going to shoot. Well, I'm shooting the infantry. I'm all in range. Right? In over half range, but I am shooting from ambush. So Finnish special rule rifles makes it uh, fours to hit. Not a great roll. We've got a couple of hits there and no kills, but it is a pin on these veterans. Nice. Turn five is finish. Now, I'm not going to go on ambush with my sniper this time. I'm going to go for the shot on the flamethrower. Come on, lad. We got the hit. That's what we needed. Got down TV <laughs> <laughs> a four to kill. No. Yes, we got him, finally. No more messing around. Sometimes you just got to take the initiative. He's advancing up full of engineers. He's firing his LMG at the sissy squad here. Try and get another pin on them. He gets a hit. Just the one. And no kills. We've done a little reposition with this sissy squad. Gone into ambush, pulled away from the flamethrower team. Now we're going to fire our bow fours into this jeep in hard cover, needing spies. Slice him up here. We've got the hit that we need. Pen plus three on a soft skin. No. Two plus three. No. Um, no, take spin though. Sissy advancing to point blank of this veteran squad. And uh, it's going to be fives because JP's decided to go down. It's a solid Good. burst though. Needing fives again. Come on, lads, let's get a solid burst here. Only one and a pin. Veterans have hopped out six inches. Again, over flamethrower range from their target, but they're just going to spray those SMGs, needing sixes, into the sniper team. He has fired, though. Oh, that's a oh, great a burst. burst. Just what he needs. I can't believe he just pulled that off. Oh, he's okay. got him. About halfway through turn five. Now, a bit of manoeuvring going on. JP, knowing he's not going to get into my uh, board edge, he's just... Hop these guys out and actually run them out of the vehicle. Just spread them in a line and make sure there's no gaps for me to get around if I want to run a car into his deployment zone, run my flamethrower up, something like that. He's also backed his Jeep up into my deployment zone, giving him a point. I'm now going to try and swap that into a point in my hands with a lucky six from this mortar here. Come on, lad. Six for victory, baby. No, it's a one. I've advanced my Shrek up to get a shot at him. But before I can roll my five up, he's going to try and kill me or make it a six up. Four shots from an ambush. No. Misses with everything. Okay, now I get a five up back at you. Try and knock you out. Come on, lad. It's no. a four. Curses. Just move He's going to try and fire a lob shot all the way onto the back of that car there. You can just see it. Needing a six. Needing a six. Lucky Warhammer TV for me. Come on. 
No. Sniper's going for that all important shot at the Panzer Shrek team as well. Four. Chasing them all again, he's got the hit. No kill though. It's a few holes in his tail coat, so I'll tell him. I'll tell you that. Turn five and end of the game. We've run out of time. We've been doing it to a tournament timer. It is what it is. Now, tail end of the turn, as we saw, the Jeep duck. D ducked, dodged, dip, dive, and dodged its way, even taking surviving a hit from the bow force. Very lucky there. Mm -hmm. That would have won me the game. Uh, he did manage to kill my sniper by advancing up, but couldn't get any further units into my table, into my uh, deployment zone. Because you've got to get six inches from the board edge. So although he's got a solid wedge of stuff here, he's got six veterans, six inexperienced guys, and a couple of transports. Um, uh, well, sorry, gas jeep and a transport. Jeep and a transport. So he's got a little bit of support there, but he can't Empty. really push in. And he wasn't really going to make it. He might have got another vehicle in there. And I've just done a fighter withdrawal. That's what the Finns can do. They skirmish like, great, he's not caught me. I haven't managed to actively push him out, but I didn't have the force to do it. But I've managed to stall him enough that he didn't get into my deployment zone, didn't get the points that he wanted. Now, likewise, on my side, we fought to a bit of a standstill. I've managed to push and advance Pepper pot up, firing advance, um, and do some casualties, keep the Soviets' heads down, and sort of beat them two veteran squads to three. He's not really managed to advance more than 12 inches of the board, but he's got a to. solid line yeah. over there. I've not been able to get up, and then these cars could have happily run uh, up if it wasn't for his dog team there, and it is just not worth uh, risking two points for just losing two points and him winning the game because at the moment we're on five kills for the Finns and four kills for the Soviets. Other way around. Uh, oh yeah sorry other way around so we're drawing with the Soviets having a one dice lead. So overall we've both pushed towards each other's lines we've both failed to get any scoring units into each other's lines because this vehicle is a transport and it's unoccupied. He wanted to get the flamethrower in there but I shot him and I also shot the officer when he was hopping out mm -hmm. of it. So he doesn't have anything that he can get. He can't quite get the dog team in there. They advanced this turn up to there. So all he needed was one more turn to hop that dog team in there and get a couple of units scoring. But unfortunately, just didn't pan out. And likewise over here, unfortunately, just a little beaters. more time. Yeah, yeah. If I, yeah, the clock beeped us. If I could have pushed in here, killed these, got the dog team, and it's happy days running my transports and stuff up his line. Just grit my teeth and hopefully it would come down to a, We'd be in the same position. We're both there. Uh, yeah. yeah, bloodbath. Because I'm, again, shooting my bow fours over here. Shooting my infantry over here. He can chase me all day long, but I can advance back six inches. He can advance forward six inches. <laughs> He's not getting me. He's not getting me. So, um, with all that being said, I hope you guys have found this interesting and entertaining. It's certainly been good for us to have a little bit of tawny practice. Yeah. Uh, it's weird not using cover saves again. Yeah, we've got used to cover <laughs> saves very quickly there. So, um, yeah, it'll be business as usual. Back to uh, Bolt Action 2.5. 5.5 now. Uh, 5. 5. Yeah, yeah, release, yeah, yeah, after today's release. Done a lot of filming today. <laughs> Done an intelligence briefing and a battle report. Now, of course, this was practice for the Warlord GT. If you guys are going to be at BritCon this weekend, then, of course, if you're participating, hopefully we... Uh, draw bayonets against each other. If not, hopefully we get a chance to say hello and share a pint of hail, ale Caesar. Hail Caesar. Warlord's uh, home, brew. home brew for the tournament. Looking forward to getting myself a couple of uh, couple of Spons. jars of that down me, mate. Now, um, with all that being said, yeah, if you like what we do here, make sure you like the video. It really helps the channel out. Subscribe so you don't miss out all our V3 content. We hope you found this video interesting and entertaining. This has been the Skull of Progenium. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.